Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Han and I'm a professional hand embroidery artist. I do specialize in shoe embroidery and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to design and embroider your very own pair of shoes. I'm trying to keep these intros as short and sweet as possible, so let's hop right into the video. Okay, so step one is going to be choosing the shoe that you'll be embroidering onto. I always recommend embroidering onto canvas type shoes. Converse are always a really safe bet. You can also go with an off-brand knockoff version of Converse. I just can't speak to how thick the material is on those, but it would definitely be a more budget-friendly option. I like to work on these monochrome white Converse. Kind of gives like a stark contrast between the shoe and the embroidery design that I put onto the shoes. It is important to know where you can and where you can't embroider on the shoes. Almost all shoes will have a rubber insert near the heel for support, and it's important to remember that you can't embroider through this usually. It's very, very hard to get the needle through. So don't plan any intricate design around the heels of the shoes. So the next step is going to be to plan out your design and to know exactly what stitches you're going to be using on your shoes. Especially if you're a beginner, you don't want to hop in with some really complex stitches on your first ever embroidery project, especially on a pair of shoes. So I recommend going to Pinterest and looking up some inspiration for the kind of design that you want to embroider onto your shoes. As far as stitches go, there are so many free tutorial videos on YouTube showing you exactly how to embroider certain flowers. Again, I recommend going for slightly more simple stitches on your first shoe embroidery project. So those would be straight stitches, satin stitches and lazy daisy stitches as they're all quite beginner friendly and you can create some really beautiful designs with just these basic stitches. I'm looking to embroider some florals onto these shoes today, so I'm searching for floral embroidery designs. Of course, you don't have to embroider flowers onto your shoes, in which case you would just look up inspiration for whatever it is you're wanting to embroider. You can look up shoe embroidery designs, but I would advise against copying another artist's design stitch for stitch, just because I know some people can get quite upset by that, even if you're not copying a design to then sell it on. I do think it's okay to take inspiration from designs, especially when you're not copying them stitch for stitch. So once you've got your inspiration, you've got a couple of photos saved, it's time to start mapping out the design that you want to put onto your own shoes. For this process, I like to use Procreate, but it's really not necessary. You can always just use a pencil and paper. This is just where I sketch out all of my designs and I have a trusty blank Converse sketch ready for me whenever I go into the app. So when it comes to how the design itself actually looks on the shoe, you have a few different options. One option that I tend to go for quite often is aligning the design to the stitches that border the lace outlets. I like this option because the design often looks like it just belongs on the shoe and I think it just looks really well thought out. Another option would be to make the design drape from the top of the shoe as if the florals and the greenery are growing from the tops of the shoe. So I'm thinking like vines, trailing flowers like wisteria. And then another option is to kind of flip that and make the florals grow from the bottom of the shoe which is what I think I'm going to be doing today. Like making the florals look like they're growing from the ground and the sole of the shoe is the ground. I really like that. I think it looks really natural. I'm really just a, a big fan of when the design looks natural and like it belongs on the shoe. And for the inside of the shoe, I find it always looks best if the design wraps around the Converse logo, which is also what I'm going to be doing today. Another reason that I think Procreate is really great for sketching out your shoe embroidery designs is because if, like me, you're not fantastic at drawing, you can actually purchase floral stamp brushes on Etsy. They're usually usually downloadable and they work just like a stamp. You just press your Apple Pencil down and a fully drawn flower will appear. I have some really basic flower stamps that I purchased years ago when I first started using Procreate and they're actually really helpful when I'm just trying to get a design down very quickly. I don't use them in any of my commercial designs that I sell but I do find them very useful uh, when I'm on the fly and I'm just trying to get something down very quickly and I think they could be very useful if you're not super gifted at drawing but you have a specific flower or floral design that you want to get on your shoes. There are thousands of listings on Etsy and you're sure to find whatever you're looking for. If you're sat there watching this video and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I really want to embroider a pair of shoes but I just don't think I have it in me to design the entire thing. I've actually designed a whole bunch of downloadable PDF embroidery designs specifically for shoes. They're beginner friendly and they contain extremely detailed step-by-step -step instructions of how to embroider some of my best-selling shoe embroidery designs onto your own shoes. I'll have those linked 
in the description if this all seems a little bit too daunting. So once you're happy with your design and the way that it's looking on either your tablet or paper, whatever method that you're using, it is time to transfer it onto the shoes ready for embroidery. So the first way that you could transfer your design onto your shoes would be printing your design on fabric solvy paper, cutting out that design and sticking it onto your shoes. I do love this method. I actually create shoe embroidery kits with this exact method and it's so great because there's no room for error. Your design will look exactly the same once it's stuck onto the shoes as it was on your tablet. However, there are some limitations to this method. You would have to map out your embroidery design in an app like Procreate where you'd then be able to export that file and print onto the fabric solvy paper. Another limitation with this method is that you have to have access to an inkjet printer. It has to specifically be an inkjet printer. It can't be any other kind of printer. And if you don't have access to this kind of printer, you aren't able to use the fabric solvy paper. Another reason that I do like the fabric solvy method is because it's very easy to remove afterwards once you're done embroidering. The fabric solvy paper dissolves when it comes into contact with water. It can take 15 to 20 minutes for all of the fabric solvy paper to dissolve once you're done embroidering. I tend to just gently rub it with a damp towel and it dissolves quite nicely leaving your neat finished embroidery project behind. The other method that you can use to transfer your design onto your shoes is sketching your design directly onto the shoes with a disappearing marker. There are a couple different disappearing ink pens that I recommend for this method, but I like to use the Dritz disappearing ink marker, specifically the blue side, because this is the side that disappears when it comes into contact with water. Once I'm done embroidering the shoes, I give them a quick spritz with a water spray bottle and the disappearing ink does exactly that, it just disappears. It can take up to 30 to 40 minutes for the ink to disappear completely so don't worry if it doesn't on the first couple of sprays. Just know that this marker won't show up very well on dark coloured shoes as it is light blue in colour. You wouldn't be able to use this marker on black shoes for example but I do have some other options linked in the description that would work on darker coloured shoes. But this method is super forgiving because even if you make a mistake when you are sketching out your design just a quick spray of water and it's gone. Okay so we are almost at the embroidery step but for this step we are going to be gathering all the materials that we need to complete the shoe embroidery. So obviously we are going to need needles. In truth you can use any kind of embroidery needles for shoe embroidery. I just use regular DMC embroidery needles. These are about a dollar on Amazon. A non-negotiable essential that you need for shoe embroidery would be finger protectors. I use these silicone finger protectors. They fit really nicely on each finger. I usually wear them on my index and middle finger just to get a little bit of extra grip when I'm pulling the needle through the shoe really does save the skin on your fingertips because shoe embroidery is a lot harder on the hands than just regular embroidery on like a muslin fabric. We're obviously going to need our embroidery thread. It's easiest to gather this now and to have it all on hand because you will be switching between colors as you go. And lastly, you will need some scissors. Any scissors will do. I like to use slightly smaller scissors because it's easier to get within the shoe and snip off any excess thread. All of these embroidery supplies will be linked in the description below. They're all super affordable. So once you've gathered all your supplies, it's going to be time to embroider your design onto your shoes. So I'm just going to go over the sketch that I marked out earlier. And I'm actually using the satin stitch for almost the entirety of this design. You don't need a crazy variation of stitches to achieve a nice aesthetic result. Now your design might not look anything like mine. And if I showed you the entire process of me embroidering these shoes, we'd be here for a couple of hours. But I will give you some tips on how to complete your own shoes. My first tip would be to unlace your shoes and tuck the tongue of the shoes under the heel cap. This way you won't have any obstructions when embroidering and you won't accidentally embroider through the laces, which I've definitely done before. The second tip I have for you is double knot your thread whenever you go to tie it off and secure it within the shoes. This will just ensure that your embroidery lasts as long as possible and you'll get no threads coming loose when wearing the shoes. The third tip I have for you is to split your thread into smaller sections for a more delicate result. Embroidery thread is made up of six smaller strands that are pressed together. I like to use two to three strands when embroidering flowers and stems because it looks less bulky when finished. And my final tip for you is to make sure you take breaks. Do not try and embroider your shoes all in one go. This is a surefire way to hurt your fingers and make the entire process unenjoyable. Spread your project out and enjoy the process. The end product will be so much better. So drum roll please, here are the shoes that I finished today. I really wanted this design to be kind of daisy centric, so I took that and just kind of ran with it. 
I didn't add any other kinds of flowers and I used very basic stitches for this design. And I think they turned out really nicely. So you've just spent hours embroidering your shoes. You're probably wondering, what if they get dirty? How do I make the embroidery last? As far as taking care of the embroidery on the shoes, the embroidery is much more hardy than it looks. And as long as you're not walking through thorny bushes or really tough undergrowth, the embroidery on the outside of the shoes will last for as long as the shoes do. If your shoes do get dirty, do not throw them in the washing machine, please, for the love of God. It's actually really, really bad for canvas shoes to be fully submerged in water like that. It can really affect the structural integrity of the shoe itself and you've just spent hours embroidering it, you don't want the shoe to crumble. I recommend spot cleaning with colourless soap or detergent. Use a warm cloth and clean any dirty or muddy areas, but just no washing machine, please. <laughs> if you're really worried about your shoes getting muddy and dirty and maybe you're planning on wearing them to a festival or an outdoor event, I would definitely recommend using some waterproofing spray. I'll have my favourite spray linked in the description below and this basically just makes it easier to spot clean your shoes if anything does get on them. It won't seep into the fabric of the shoe and you'll be able to clean it off really easily. Here's another little close-up of my finished shoes. I really hope you like them. I actually sell these on Etsy, so if you're watching this video and you're like, yeah, that looks fun but not really for me. I kind of just want to buy some that are already made. Look no further, my Etsy store will be linked in the description below. And that is all I have for you today. I hope that you found this video helpful, a little bit informational at least, and and it's my hope that you can go away from this and potentially design and embroider your own shoes. As I mentioned earlier, I do actually make downloadable embroidery PDF patterns. If you really don't fancy designing your own, I've got you covered. I'll have them linked in the description below. But thank you so much for watching if you've gotten this far. And to all 18,000 people who are subscribed to this channel, thank you so much. Um... <laughs> I really appreciate having you all here. I really appreciate everyone who's taken the time to watch this video. And if you would like to see more videos like this, I definitely consider subscribing to this channel. I make a lot of embroidery DIY tutorial style videos and I plan to make many more in the future. So that's it from me. Thanks again for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.